Shane's brought us a little way down the road from Te Kōpua Marae and we're in between Porongia behind us and Kakapuku, the maunga there and they've got some longer names Shane and speaking of which names there's some interesting stories behind the naming of these features. Yeah, so these two mountains are um, known to us here at Ngāti Unu Ngāti Kahu at our little marae here at Te Kōpua uh, spoken of poetically as Ngā Huhao Kahurere, the thighs of Kahurere. Now, uh, Kahurere was an uh, ancestor of ours, and she came from originally from uh, Whaingaroa, from Raglan. Uh, but uh, she was betrothed to marry a much older gentleman by the name of Uetapu uh, on the southern shores of Kafia. And uh, they were married, and uh, not long after she fell pregnant and had their first son, of well, only child really, and that child grew up and as a young man was given tasks to set out across the land here in the, the hinterland, the inland from the coast and to search out places for the families to settle. And so his God was gone for some time which left uh, Uetapu and uh, Kahurere to themselves. Uh, unfortunately, uh, old age caught up with Uetapu when he passed, and in her great sadness and in her loneliness, uh, Kahurere uh, decided to leave Hauturu, to leave uh, her home or her husband's home there on the southern shores of the harbour, Kafia and come inland looking for her son. And so one of the places that she stopped was here at Pirongia. According to Ngāti Unu Ngāti Kahu, she was pregnant at the time. And her pregnancy didn't go well. And she began to hemorrhage and other signs of her pregnancy and her unwellness began, became obvious. And uh, it was also recognised by her travelling companions who, as they graced this mountain here, which is now known as Pirongia Te Aruaru Kahurere, uh, which was once known as Puafe, which literally means the cold, because it was a place that was freezing mm -hmm. and the winds from the south would blow. Uh, but once they reached uh, Puafe, they, her companions began to notice a foul smell, which set them gossiping, saying, geez, where's that coming from? Mm -hmm. And they all began to realise that it was coming from their leader, Kahurere. And the mountain was named for that smell. Pirongia literally means uh, putrid, the smell fell. And Aroaro is the front area uh, of um, Kahurere. And that event was marked in the name given to the mountain there, to Pirongia. Uh, there are other stories there too where she took it upon herself to wash herself and to and try and, and cleanse her body of the illness that had struck her. In coming this way, she uh, would eventually uh, note that there was a great river down here, uh, the Waipa River that flows here. Now, from former times, it had another name. What that name is, we cannot remember. Uh, but what we do know from Ngāti Unu Ngāti Kahu stories is that as Kahurere and her people moved down uh, over the shoulder, the southern shoulder of Puafe, which is now Pirongia, Te Aruaruo Kahurere, that she spied in the valley here a river, a great river. And she needed to cleanse herself, she needed to find water, and so she began to pick up speed and run towards it. And her people called out to her, mm, e kuie, uh, Lady, where are you running to? And she didn't answer. Three times they called out to her, where are you going to? And it's not until the third time she turned to them in her flight, in her full run, and she called out, Kua pā mai te haumatāho te waiti aku taringa. The sound of water hath reached my ears. 
Now that's a very long sentence, which the over time our old people truncated to waipa. Waipa mm. mai te ho mataho te waikiakutaringa. The sound of water has touched or reached my ears. And she ran on to the waipa, and from that day, according to Ngati Unu Ngati Kahu, that is the the moment and the time that has been remembered through the naming of the river. From there she began her great movement again and uh, her travels uh, and again she was looking for her son who had gone inland uh, from the coast and she made her way uh, to this most magnificent mountain, Kakepuku, glorious standing there today. And upon reaching the mountain, she stayed here for some time and she noticed that uh, her illness had returned and she was swelling. And hence the name Kakepuku. Kakepuku te rere ngā okahu. Kakepuku, the swelling of the neck, the swelling of the, this area uh, of kahu. Te rere ngā okahu in Kahu's travels. So this place was named specifically by Kahurere, or rather by the events that mm. struck her as she traveled across the, this part of the, the country. In fact, she's responsible for naming just about all of the major mm. geographical features here in the area. The mountain once called Puafe, now called Pirongia Te Aruaru Kahu, was named after her. The river here, was named after her also, and the name Kakepuku. You know, that's a fascinating story that comes from those names, so thanks for sharing that with us. I'd be interested to see where you take us to next, Shane. Great. Well, let's get going. Kia ora. <laughs>